two months elapsed, and suddenly, one after the other, came a sequence of the most serious events, forming a surprising run of alternate luck and misfortune. On the 1st of February, at half-past five, Monsieur Gerbois, who had just come home with an evening paper in his hand, sat down, put on his spectacles, and began to read. The political news was uninteresting. He turned the page, and a paragraph at once caught his eye, headed, Third drawing of the Press Association Lottery. First prize, one million francs. Number 514, Series 23. The paper dropped from his hands. The wall swam before his eyes, and his heart stopped beating. Number 514, Series 23, was the number of his ticket. He had bought it by accident, to oblige one of his friends, for he did not believe in luck. And now he had won. He took out his memorandum book, quick. He was quite right. Number 514, Series 23, was jotted down on the flyleaf. But where was the ticket? He flew to his study to fetch the box of stationery in which he had put the precious ticket away, and he stopped short as he entered and staggered back, with a pain at his heart. The box was not there, and, what an awful thing, he suddenly realized that the box had not been there for weeks. Suzanne! Suzanne! She had just come in and ran up the stairs hurriedly. He stammered in a choking voice. Suzanne, the box, the box of stationery. Which one? The one I bought at Louvre, on a Thursday. It used to stand at the end of the table. But don't you remember, father? We put it away together. When? That evening, you know, the day before. But where? Quick, tell me. It's more than I can bear. Where? In the writing desk. In the desk that was stolen? Yes. In the desk that was stolen. He repeated the words in a whisper, with a sort of terror. Then he took her hand, and lower still, it contained a million, Suzanne. Oh, father, why didn't you tell me? She murmured innocently. A million, he repeated. It was the winning number in the press lottery. The hugeness of the disaster crushed them, and, for a long time, they maintained a silence which they had not the courage to break. At last, Suzanne said, But father, they will pay you all the same. Why? On what evidence? Does it require evidence? Of course. And have you none? Yes, I have. Well, it was in the box. In the box that has disappeared? Yes. And the other man will get the money. Why, that would be outrageous. Surely, father, you can stop the payment? Who knows? Who knows? That man must be extraordinarily clever. He has such wonderful resources. Remember, think how he got hold of the desk. His energy revived. He sprang up and, stamping his foot on the floor, No! 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 he shouted. He shan't have that million! He shan't! Why should he? After all, sharp as he may be, he can do nothing either. If he calls for the money, they'll lock him up. Ha! We shall see, my friend. Have you thought of something, father? I shall defend our rights to the bitter end, come what may. And we shall succeed. The million belongs to me, and I mean to have it. A few minutes later, he dispatched this telegram. Governor, Crédit Foncier, Rue Capucine, Paris. M. Owner, number 514, series 23. Opposed by every legal method, payment to any other person. Gerbois. At almost the same time, the Crédit Foncier received another telegram. Number 514, series 23, is in my possession. Arsène Lupin. Inscreva-se no canal e ative o sino de notificações para receber mais conteúdo e elevar o seu nível de inglês.